pops its head, and there he goes. Abyss gonna clean him up. Olaf goes down. Everyone's just gonna line up here for Lazzy. He's gonna find himself the Quadra. I give it to him. That's a kill. Grizzly with the quad feet gets the ace. Available just spin to win all over. That game was insane. Welcome back, everybody, to St. Clair Saints League action, and uh, we are just loading into this game right now. The NECC semifinals means a lot for both of these teams. They've come so far in this season, and when you think back on it, what's what's been some of your favorite moments? Honestly, well, of course, from two weeks ago, the quarterfinals, we got the the Ricky two v five Pentakill has been crazy. was was a great moment. I definitely popped <laughs> off. I, I definitely, I literally stood up from my chair. Like, yeah, that's that was that was. was a pop off moment right there. But here we are <laughs> getting into game number one of this series: Durham versus Saint Clair, and already smashing the top lane, and in the jungle. He's going to be taking a little bit of damage here. He's going to be forced into the pit. He might have to. Does he just start dash? Yeah, he did start dash. So it'll be okay. We'll just back off speed. here. I'm assuming he just takes out for the clear as well. Or I'm assuming it won't detriment his clear if it's yeah. not what he starts with regularly. I mean, I think the E gives you attack speed if I'm not wow. mistaken. This is just... Yeah, Ricky's kind of getting beat up here. Yeah. Some good predictions. No, he's going to back off here. So, won't take any more damage from Anime Girl 2007. And we have Mothfat in the jungle. Hectic in the mid lane. Kyorez in the ADC position. And oof. In the support position and uh Oof. i do remember hectic specifically was really really good in mid lane he mm. played cassid in one game and uh almost he was like i think the only one who was ahead for durham and then the other game he played echo and he was i think eight and one at one point so he was really a difference maker for durham they ended up losing the series 2-0 to st Clair, but he really he could have made a huge difference there if he had uh, any other supporters around him unfortunately they just uh, couldn't find anything for him yeah, and of course, he's on that Victor, too. Definitely a very strong pick right now. Ooh, he's got and first strike. One of the people who's actually making use of the new mage item, too, Crown of the Shattered Queen. I feel like a lot of mages, like, everyone was trying it out, and then they kind of realized maybe Ludens is still better, or yeah. Leandries, depending on who you're playing. But Victor is definitely one of the people who has been taking that. Um, yeah, it's just hard because it's a, so much of a defensive item that you don't get enough AP value when you hit that one item yeah. spike that when you're fighting people in the mid lane, usually you end up losing the 1v1s, but um, a lot of damage down actually here onto Oof, but nothing going to be happening there so far. And like I was saying, I think for him specifically, it's okay that you don't have that crazy early game spike on your one item because you are waiting for your Hextech core to complete, yeah. and that is when you're going to become very strong. Ricky getting some damage in on the Mundo here. That's Those are the kind of trades he needs to take if he does actually want to make this a hard lead. Oh, he has Ignite! Oh, Ignite coming out! Is that going to kill him? It looks He's like ticking? he may just survive. Oh, and he is going to be able to get the back off. That is a close one. So Ignite is going to be down for Ricky here. And that's the advantage of taking TP Ignite, right? Is you have that kind of lane facilitation that you can't get. You can't go for those 1v1s. We're going to see the TP coming back here. Pretty stacked wave. Might go for a stun, but no. He's going to Q and just hop away here. And the wave will be stacked, but already a TP burn in the top lane. That is so huge for this matchup. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, I don't think we need to see Ricky burn his TP either. He's most likely just going to walk back to lane. Uh, so yeah, pretty good. They also got, He also got his flash. So yeah, that, pretty that's a pretty big Pretty win. good start for Ricky there. Oh, Ricky does actually burn the TP, and he's going to shove in this wave. But he does have an item advantage now. He has a yeah. long sword, whereas you see only a pot and a pink ward for the Mundo up here. So already an advantage building up here for this Jax in the top lane. And I mean, right now, actually, the jungle differential is pretty big, too. I don't know if the Jarvan just got a slow start to the jungle here, or if Quen is just cracked. I'm, I wasn't really paying attention, but 25 farm already. Already a 9 yeah. CS advantage here, and with no ganks off, that's already a big win in my books. Yeah, yeah, we see they got the Scuttles at the same time, but there's two camps oh, left up for the Jarvan, and the gank is going to come through. E-Hug autoing down Hectic, but it's just not enough. He's going to be able to walk back to safety under turret. Does burn the flash, though, so both Soul Laner's flashes are down here, and we talk about how important this early game needed to be for the side of Durham, because that is where your power is going to be. You get to late game, I mean, you do have the Jinx, and you do have the Victor for the carry potential, but you have a Gwen, Jax, and Corky, and an Ash stacked up for St. Clair, so it's just going to be really hard to beat that out in a, in a team fight when you get past that 30-minute mark. Yeah, I also like to see... Oh, they actually did... Oh, Durham got the Scuttlebot, actually. Oh, no. Red Tide is St. Clair. I'm 
<laughs> it's okay. Not, not a good one today. Oh, fight. Fight is going out in the bot lane. Ignite is going to come down onto Fresh, but they're going to be able to just auto down Kiorez oh, on the Jinx. Get they get Thresh. They're able to get the Jinx or the Thresh as the slows. well. The slows are crazy. The Flash is going to come out. Is it going to be enough? The autos just keep coming. Oh. Wow. He's going to live with like 10 health there. Anime girl level up. Running away what from the gank here. No Flash. Flash going to... This is going to be a free kill. This comes is out. a free kill. This is massive. This is already a kill in the kills. top and bot. And the fact that they went to the bot lane. Well, they're sorry. They 2v2 in the bot lane. They won that fight. And they also converted top lane into a kill onto the mm. top lane. is so massive because you're winning on both sides of the map. You're not giving this Jarvan anywhere to move. Couldn't even get the Dragon because really, really good awareness by Corky. The fact that he floated down to Dragon after he backed just to make sure they weren't doing it. It did mean that they not only were able to get two kills. They were able to not lose any objectives on it. And... I mean, somehow, despite that, farm is still even for these junglers. So, uh, just really, really good macro there for St. Clair, and it's giving them a clear advantage here in the early game. Yeah, and we're going to see the Thresh actually going down to get some vision in the blue side river there. In the bot side river, my bad. Wave is going to get pushed in bot. More trading coming out in top lane. He's going to pop out that, that CC shield. Yeah, and the fact that Ricky's winning this despite the... the Bramble Vest already built here for the Mundo is, is big because when Ricky goes for a back here sometimes he's going to have a really big item advantage and they're going to be able to extend that. He's hopefully going to be able to extend this lead even further than he already has. Obviously, he is down pretty significantly in CS, CS right now. Yeah. I think a lot of that early fighting did mean he lost a lot of minions, but it in the end, it did net him a kill and it did net him a TP flash from the other uh, laner. So... I think still pretty good for him here. Fight's gonna happen. Gonna pop the W. Oh, Ignite's Ignite back down. up, yeah. That was a huge heal though. Is he gonna live from that? Wow. There's no way this Mundo lives from that. He does again. He's gonna be fighting mid. Like oh, the flash gonna go through. Oh, Zephyrol lives. I don't know how he lived through that storm. Able to survive here. Engage and come through in the bot lane as well. Hook gonna find. Both targets gonna be here. Engage and come down on this ADC. Barlow gonna be taken down instantly here. Fresh running for his life. Has to flash out. Will he live here? Gonna try and run away. Gonna get W'd up. Yes, he will. Gonna get slow. Flash gonna come through. Shield gonna come up, but it's not gonna matter. Gonna go down. And in the top lane, in the meanwhile, Mundo also killed the Jack. So, in the end, across the map, 3 for 0 for Durham. And they come back in this game swinging. Yeah. Wow. But completely flipped St. Clair on their head after what St. Clair just did. And now they're going to be able to secure this first dragon off of it. We're seeing the gold, 500 gold up in the top lane. Uh, although Zephyrod actually with a pretty heavy gold lead in the mid lane with that solo kill. Yeah, he does find 300 gold for himself. But again, this farm discrepancy in the top lane meant that the gold wasn't as different as it would have seemed. And, and despite the fact that you did get that early kill onto Mundo, it went onto the jungler, not onto Jack. So uh, I think Ricky, obviously we saw him get so close to killing those two fights with the Ignite. He just mm -hmm. Mundo barely living. And, and now this is going to cause a real problem here because you see now the item advantage is going to be on Mundo's yeah. side. But Ricky just... Wants to keep going in, but the, the problem is the more Ricky goes in here, the more sustain this Mundo is going to have as time goes on. So you can't really take these small, short fights. You want to go for more extended trades because if you can proc your lethal tempo, that's where you can actually out-trade him. But I think for now, Ricky just needs to, to take it down a bit, try and even out the farm and try and slow the game down because you saw there, yes, Zephyrock got a kill in mid, but everywhere else, everywhere lost. So you just have to be careful how you play with these next couple of minutes. Because you can't let that snowball. Yeah, it's like, and every time we we seem to go up to this top lane, right? We're seeing Ricky go for one of these trades, but he's losing two to three CS every time, and he's taking damage from the tower. Oh wow, Mundo gonna be able to pick up another solo kill. Like, like Ricky's just he's just going in. He's just not respecting the power of Mundo, yeah. right? And the problem is, normally he's playing that bully lane in the jacks, but because Mundo is so strong right now in this meta, and because he has the item advantage. Mundo able to survive a lot of what Ricky wants to do. Normally, you, you proc that W, you hop on with your Q damage. It's pretty effective poke, but because he has good healing, he's able to knock, because the E knocks the health off him and he's able to regen it back, it's so hard to win out these trades. And now with yeah. a 30 CS lead in the top lane, two kills as well, this Mundo is going to be a problem. Package going to come here in the mid lane, though. Going to do a decent amount of damage here. Poke going to come through both sides. He's going to have to walk back out. So in the end, he'll take about two-thirds of each other's health, but uh, no kills going through. Yeah, Victor Ultimate is gonna be down for the foreseeable future, um, but nothing too big happening in the mid lane there. 
Yeah, and Zephron actually has built himself uh, quite a decent lead, actually. 15 mm -hmm. CS, got that solo kill as well. He is sitting very well in this mid lane, and for right now, it's really good because it stabilizes a lot of what the junglers want to do. And you see, there is Moffat sitting here waiting to gank this. Corky does not have Flash available either, so this could be dangerous depending on how they play it. Very patiently, but E-Hug coming around the back. This could be a, this could be a good counter gank if it comes through. Yeah, E-Hug, he's definitely close enough to rotate quick should he see it, but Moffat is actually just going to give up on that. Makes sense, honestly. I, I don't think it was really a prime position to gank there. Um, yeah, I think the problem is, you know, Hectic doesn't have ult mm -hmm. and is very low on mana. So even if yeah. you do engage that, if E-Hug manages to come in, it, it really seems like the counter gank would turn in St. Clair's favor. So I think that's why they wanted to call it off there. And actually, I didn't notice that E-Hug has Ghost on Glenn. No Flash. Yeah, no Flash as well in the jungle. So <laughs> no Flash top or jungle from the side of St. Clair. Very interesting. interesting to see. Yeah, But it, it makes such a difference, right? Because you think about how long Flash has been like a staple in league right like no matter what position you're playing no matter what role you're playing every single person takes flash it's always on uh, always on your summoner spells it has to be but we've seen throughout the last season and i guess through the start of this season that top laners taking tp ignite like camille uh yeah. like the jacks like the wukong the fact that you're able to take those extra summoners is so huge because it gives you a lane advantage with the ignite and it gives you a macro advantage with your tp so i really like this i really like the fact that you're adapting and you're seeing other things that aren't flash because it gives the game so much more variance yeah like yeah like you said flash was such a staple for so long you would only see champs like shaco or something take ignite over flash because they have that mobility but there's a lot of other champs that have that now and we're seeing players take advantage of that but they don't they aren't forced to take flash basically yeah it feels nice because you see a lot more variety in what people decide to play how they play roles and stuff but we are going to see a three-man collapse here on bot lane tp going to come through though just preemptively but hectic going to be here as well Root going to come through here for the Corky. Will stop him in his tracks, so will you stand up here? But well good TP there, able to save the bot laner because he didn't have Shield Bow come through yet. So I think Barlow there, if he does get engaged, I would definitely be taking the W with this wall, actually. Oof, down to half HP. A lot of damage Ooh, from this Corky. Forced to flash out. Barlow, all oh, the damage is not going to get through from the Corky, though. Cairo is going to be slowed down significantly here. Will Angel up. Flash going to come through. Nice. Barlow going to find Kaora there and will tie us up at four kills apiece and even at the gold as well. Yeah, nice. Nice engage there from the bot lane. Obviously, they saw them disengage. They saw them pretty split up. And then, of course, we see Zephyroth just start taking the dip, like stacking on the damage into Oof. As we're going to see two engages in the mid lane here. Eha going to come in. He's trying to get that damage down on Hectic. He is going to take him down. Moffat, he just can't peel. And he can't take down Ehug either. The Victor ult not going to take him, able to take him down as well. He is going to get out of there unscathed. Unscathed. 3-0 on E-Hug right now. Yeah, and Ricky is going to be fighting up here in the top lane. Will pop the R. Ignite going to come down, but oh, he's going to live. Turret shit shot killed him, though, so Ricky will get the trade back. So in the end, one. it still is a trade back in kills, and they do get the dragon. So across the board, St. Clair netting victories and uh, bringing themselves to now a gold lead. So we talked about how important this early game was going to be for the Jarvan, but Jarvan actually sitting at 1-1-1, one, one, and one, down 20 farm, and it's just E-Hug, right? Like, we've seen how powerful E-Hug can be when you give him these carry champions, and we're seeing it again on this Gwen. 3-0-0 to start off this game is doing so well, able to get these early ganks off, and I think if this game keeps going forward the way it is, I definitely think St. Clair can't take this game for sure and go to game number two up a game. Yeah, we are also see Ricky coming and bought here. He used the TP but their bot lane may just be able to get out while the Jarvan is going to be able to rotate. Bit of a wasted TP, but not the worst thing. The yeah, Herald also popped here in the mid lane before plates go down and it's huge because this Corky is going to get a lead. Actually, no, they're going to move everyone towards mid and it will force them off. Will be used to force use a package here. They're going on Moffat though. Moffat damage down half in on HP. Moffat. He will go down here. Zephyrod, a lot of damage there. Oof going to be chipped down quite a lot as well. Get the flay onto the turret. Turret shot will come down. Eug gonna barely survive no the shutdown will come through the ignite was on him there and did end up getting taken down so 600 gold over to the thresh but in the end somehow the uh the what the shelly still crashed on mid turret yeah, yeah so it's actually 320 gold towards st Clair. so in the end actually not such a bad trade yeah they were able to get it right before the plating dropped there as well uh, honestly, at this point, I'd like to see the Jarvan from Durham go top a little more. We've seen that they have the advantage here. 
Uh, he's he's always pushed in. They could easily set up a dive here, I think, honestly. With the with the way that Ricky is constantly low health in this lane, um, I, I'd like to see him move top a little more. Yeah, but I think the, the problem is, though, right, you need to get either the Jinx or the Victor ahead. Like, the Mundo ahead is going to be nice, and I, I think right now, fight, another fight going to go on this top lane. Mm -hmm. Ricky again going to pop the ultimate. We'll dodge the Q Cleaver. We'll be able to survive. Going to pop the E as well, but... The ultimate coming through from Anime Girl 2007. That's so much healing, and he will take down Ricky again going down. But meanwhile, in the mid lane, Flash going to come through. Zephyrot going to get hectic again. Zephyrot solo killing this mid laner already twice in this game is just massive. And this mid lane, all St. Clair right now. Also, I wanted to point this out. While we were looking at Ricky in the top lane there, Zephyrot actually took the Jarvan's blue and, oh. then, and, and the scuttle and walked back to lane. And then proceeded <laughs> and to kill the mid laner. Pick up the kill. <laughs> so Zephyrot, uh, we've seen him evolve so much throughout this season. We saw his early early on in the season, he was struggling a lot playing the Silas, playing the Orianna, just wasn't doing what he needed to. But we've seen so two. much good stuff, so much damage so here. Much damage. Gonna eat in Moffat, gonna be able to escape, but not ba barely any HP left. To, and so strong right now, this Corky Gwen combo is unbelievably strong. He's gonna go in for an engage here in the top lane. Anime girl. Still going to be staying alive here. All going to be caught through, but EO going to take him down. So the Shred comes through, and that Omni Vamp doing so much health back for this Gwen is so huge. And, and St. Clair now up 2k gold. I think the biggest gold lead we've seen in this game so far. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think we saw him up around 1.5k earlier before. But yeah, this is definitely the largest gap we've seen. Um, that also comes out from a lot of the early game choices, too. Uh, we saw Zephyrot go for the cull in the early game, recognizing that they're going to have a pretty passive laning phase, so he's just going to pick up that. He's at 3k ahead yeah. of his victor right now. Like, half of this gold lead is on Corky right <laughs> it's now. On it's on the ridiculous. Corky, yeah. it's So, uh, I mean, for me right now, definitely think, right, mid lane jungle advantage is so huge for St. Clair. Botrit will go down here in just a moment. Looks like... Again, the gauge is going to come through here. Barlow going to get hooked up, and yeah, he's going to go down here. Despite the shield bow, doesn't really help you. Ricky going to be taken down low here from Mundo as well. Mundo going to put the flash through. He will get queued up. He's going to get slowed here, and Ricky going to be taken down yet again. Anime yeah. Girl making such huge problems, and we're talking about this Jax pick in the top lane for Ricky, and unfortunately just not able to take advantage of it. And actually, I just realized he built Anathema's chains on this for this Jack specifically, yeah. so like so, you can't even get stat checked yeah, anymore you, because you're just gonna really lose this. Dive anymore. gonna come in mid lane though. Mall fat dive, but he, the Thresh Lantern isn't able to save him. Zephyrok gonna pick up another kill. Yeah, and again, you're trying to shut down this Corky, trying to shut down this Gwen any way you can, but Zephyrot is having none of it, and it, it's so good for St. Clair the fact that you're able to get this mid and jungle so far ahead because right now. Ricky is just struggling so much in this top yeah. lane. A level 13 Mundo right now is just smurfing all over him. And <laughs> I, I really need to see, you know, a little bit of slowdown here. Now you realize you built up this lead in your carries in the mid jungle. Ricky just needs to stop going for these engages, try and stay under his tier 2 turret in the bot lane, and just kind of let the rest of the game play out because dra dragons are even, right? They're at 1-1. One, yeah. one. This game is definitely not going to end anytime soon. Goldie is pretty even. So if you can get to that late game mark that's when ricky's gonna be able to really come back in this game and start fighting because right now there's no one he's gonna be able to fight he's level 10. yeah exactly yeah use use the two players you have that already have the lead and let ricky try to come back into this game really uh we're gonna see four durham players moving in on this dragon here where it's just e-hug and fresh corky has a flank oh corky is coming in e-hug gonna start doing a lot of damage to oof here on the thresh not too much. Ricky LaFleur also going to come in, able to get Moffat in his own alt too. That was a huge Ooh, Lulu ult from Fresh. Able to keep Yug alive, then Yug popped the stopwatch. The fact that the jungler is still alive means they get the dragon for free, and they will be able to secure it. So two dragons now over for St. Clair. It will be a mountain soul, actually. So uh, no new souls this game, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. yeah, surprisingly. No new dragons, actually, yeah, at all. Yeah, new dragons. So one, four, three for this Jarvan. It's not the early game we're looking for from him. Yeah, definitely. And once again, I want to say it's because he's not going top. I think he should just be going top and trying to get some of this gold that the Mundo is getting from Ricky. Get a couple assists, get some gold up, get the presence on the map. I, I think if he would have put some pressure top, I could have seen them getting that first turret, uh, maybe securing the rift. But instead, we're seeing St. Clair able to take advantage of all these things that I think should have, that Jarvan should have had access to. Yeah, for sure. And it's just the fact that 
you had such a big lead on, and Gage. Nitric gonna be engaged here. Crown gonna be popped here. It doesn't even Damaged. matter. Corky is just popping off two and a half items now for Zephyrot. He is the carry oh. of this game, and you need somebody to stop this because it's Corky. This guy is gonna run all over the map. Him and his dog everywhere. <laughs> but uh, I, I mean, for me, I definitely think again, Ricky gonna go in bottling, but he has backup. He's he gonna be here, but the jungler Jarvan gonna be here as well for backup. So they are gonna try and go into anime girl. Anime girl will pop the yell, gonna run back to his teammate Moffat, looking for the engage here. We'll get the knockup on two. And then Cataclysm on two as well. We'll pop that. We're gonna have to flash out immediately. Yeah, gonna do so much damage. Look at the healing coming through. He's gonna live, but you will pop the, the Zephyr. Uh, Zonyas will survive here. Ricky's still alive somehow. Anime girl will take him out. Oof gonna come through as well. Corky gonna be taken down here. Hook gonna come through. Shield gonna come through as well. Flash gonna be popped out here, but it will be taken down by the. That's a huge shutdown for Victor. Eox still in this fight somehow. Kyra's gonna be found on the backside. Fresh gonna flash over the wall. Gonna go for the up, but not gonna find anything. Fresh gonna get hooked up. That's gonna be a kill again over to Durham. And Durham find three in that one. A good comeback and a massive shutdown for their side. Yeah, definitely. Dur <laughs> Durham played that la the later part of that fight perfectly. We saw Kyra's with that nice flash away from the Ashar. That was all. That was all Saint Clair had left in that fight, really. And, and it's so difficult now, right? Because that shutdown went to this vector, who you know Zephyrod had been doing so well against, and, and now that he's able to get to that even playing field with the shutdown on him, you don't really have a lot of people to deal with this Mundo. And, and right now, you don't see any grievous wounds on the side of Saint Clair. They haven't built that in their kits yet, and it's going to make it so much harder to fight these these team fights because this. 6, 3, and 2. Two, almost three item Mundo right now is so strong. There's too much healing on you. saw, despite the fact that both E-Hug and uh, Ricky went on that fight, it didn't even matter because Mundo's healed through all of them, was able to slow him up, and in the end, his team came through and helped him out. And it's just, it's hard to see because we expected so much from Ricky's jacks, and it yeah. just really isn't paying off. Yeah, uh, but then again, it's one of those things where it is what it is because of the matchup, right? Mundo is really strong right now. And as a player, you know, Ricky picks this Jax, he has to see that. And, you know, we're seeing the consequences of it. Um, but he's also not te he's not terribly far behind some other players in the game. He just happens yeah. to be behind the Mundo. Yeah, for sure. And for me, I'm still looking towards this jungle and mid. Obviously, 5-1-4 for both E-Hug. And Zephyrot still very, very huge carry potential. And you even have the, the late game scaling Ash could come through as well. But now the Jinx on two and a half items, yeah. almost three items, uh, almost even actually with this Mundo, uh, is very, very strong. And 226 farm, a 45 CS lead over the Ash. And they're going to spell, they're actually going to go in here. A lot of speed. So it could be, could be a good pick. Yeah, the Polymorph gonna come out, but wow, the Mundo's so fast, and the rest of Durham is able to just pick up mid turret for that. And it just doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, right? Because what they were doing, what they were successful on, was the fact that you isolated Ricky and Anime God. Obviously, Ricky could not win the one if you won, was consistently dying on it. But elsewhere around the map, you're winning. You're killing this hectic solo kill. You're getting Moffat on these picks. They're doing so well for themselves, even killing the bot lane, but twice there in the bot lane and then in the top lane, you try and take down this yeah. Mundo. And both times, you're not fast enough, he's able to outheal you, and he's able to escape. And in the end, what's it going to cost you? It costs them both Tier 1 and Tier 2 mid turret. So, I mean, for St. Clair, you just have to realize, okay, yes, this Mundo is a problem. He's three items, he's very strong, but we are winning on other sides of the map, so that's where we need to keep shoving our advantage. Just keep isolating this Mundo, let him split push, Ricky can farm up under turret, and then eventually when Ricky gets the items he needs, that's when he can start 1v1ing him. But, uh, I mean, for the rest of St. Clair, you need to just realize, you're winning elsewhere, so fight elsewhere. Yeah, I I'd like to see them more focused on this Jinx rather than the yeah. Dr. Mundo. I mean, the Jinx has had a higher shutdown for longer. Uh, she's putting in more all around the map. As well as when Mundo's not there, she doesn't have very much protection other than the Thresh and the little bit of peel that Victor provides. Um, so I'd like to see them just try and focus down this Jinx. I mean, she's going to be the real threat in the fight while Mundo isn't there. Dragon is now up. Both teams posturing for it. Corky does have package available, which would be very huge in this fight if he decides to go in. He will hopefully pop this W package do a lot of burn damage here if he can put it through. Ashalt gonna come through, gonna find Thresh, but that will be Eug finding the Dragon as well. Oof gonna be taken down almost instantly, and that's two people down. A double kill for Barlow starting off this fight. Anime are gonna be chained up here. We'll pop the ult though. So much healing coming through. Eug gonna go down here. Shutdown coming through Kyra's, for Kyoris. Kyoris gonna find his second as well. Hectic gonna find Thresh there. Ricky barely alive, but so much healing, so much frontline from the side of Durham. The fact that you got two picks and they're still 
Winning this fight is crazy. That's going to be Ubolo coming in. Get a fight too on the backside. That's a huge shutdown as Hickler take that fight in an instant. Three kills for them. And they find the ace. Oh, wow. That was a tight fight right there at the end. Holy. Uh, if you didn't see back there, Curious was putting in so much damage on that Jinx. And that's what I've been like afraid yeah. of this whole game. Uh, well, I'm also excited for it, to be honest. But I, I have to say, the difference maker in that fight was Barlow flashing face first into the in Mundo to get the W yes. over the wall to get the slow and net the yes. Corky both kill. Or I think it's the Corky or it might have been the jungler both kills. Uh, anyway, uh, it would have been... I'm pretty sure Barlow picked up four kills there. So... Oh, here we go. Instant replay. Perfect. So you see here, Barlow gets the slow. He sees those two people in the back line, right? Barlow going to flash over the wall. Just over oh, look, just pass him to hit the, the W. Absolutely beautiful. Perfect. Like, that is the kind of play we were expecting from Barlow all season long. We're talking about Barlow has struggled so much on these late game ADCs. Yeah. He's just been going forward too much, but he's played this game perfectly. And we saw there, that is a moment of unbridled courage where you are just, you may be this slow ADC that's rolling into late game and you may be facing a. 8,000 HP Mundo, but the fact that he flashes for it, gets the slow, and gets those two kills for Corky changes the game completely. While he was that low, too, keep yeah. in mind, as an ADC, you're thinking, I have to play safe, right? I'm I'm, I'm the damage, I have to sit back, I have to get my auto attacks off. And that low, he flashes past the Mundo because he knows Zephyrod is going to secure those kills. The team chemistry there. That's the confidence you have in your team, right? Exactly. Like, you just know my Corky will find these two kills. Despite him being 200 HP, all I have to do is flash forward and get the W. And in the end, they win that fight, and somehow Barlow still survives. So, yeah. I, I mean, the fact that he was able to keep that 500 gold shutdown is, is even bigger. And, and now, it is a 2k gold difference. It is still a very close game, 26 minutes in, but St. Clair now on soul point. Yeah, although... Durham definitely making a lot of headway objective-wise with this Mundo just being so threatening in the side lane, but also being at every single objective. Yeah, it's been such a big difference. You're going to see here gold discrepancy, about 3k in the top lane, but elsewhere you see 3k between Victor and Corky, you know, another 2k between the junglers right now, and wow. ADC is pretty even. So, I mean, again, we talked about it, top lane right now, the Mundo is just dominating Ricky, but elsewhere on the map, just huge discrepancies in the jungle mid, and, and that is huge. And Bar Baron will be started up here. They don't have any ward coverage of it just yet. And we'll stop the back, but ward will come down here in just a second. St. Clair, no, this is happening. TP going to come through from Mundo anyway. And with Corky, the TP comes through. Doesn't have package available. Will they challenge this one? Will they go for this steal? Ia going to come in on the backside, and they will get the steal. Ia finds a Baron there. They're going to go for a team fight too. Zephyrot fighting two already in the backside. They will lose that fight, but in the end, everywhere else, they're winning this one. They found the Baron. They found Hectic. They found Anime Girl. There's one person left on the backside. Somehow this Jinx will escape, but it doesn't matter. St. Clair win the fight. St. Clair win the Baron, and they're going to roll this down mid. That is the kind of St. Clair we wanted to see here in the semifinals. What a flip from Ehug. Wow, the dash in. He's able to secure the Baron. And then they just engage on those three members that are still stuck there. We saw Barlow's R come in, able to hit the Thresh. No disengage going to come from the Thresh. He can't stop Ehug from doing anything. He's too stunned. And that's the problem with getting this top laner ahead, right? Is the fact that, yes, your Mundo is ahead. But when you get to these late game team fights, he is a, just a giant meatball, right? Exactly. You can't really fight these team fights when... All you really have that strong is your Mundo because you have no damage to back him up. And we just saw they got the, they got the steal. Ehug with an amazing steal was able to get the kills and they were able to team fight that really, really well. Clutch job there by uh, Ehug going in and finding that Baron. And I mean, right now, St. Clair up 5k gold now is just accelerating this gold lead as fast as possible. Yeah, they're also eyeing down this dragon coming up in 30 seconds. That will mean the Mountain Soul for them. And packages up for Corky. Yeah, going to make them a lot harder to kill. Um, and could even help bring Ricky back into this game, giving him a little bit more survivability in these fights. Because we saw him in the last fight, even even now with two items, he's taking a lot of damage in yeah. these fights. But we are going to see Durham trying to zone away St. Clair. And you see the item discrepancy here too, right? Look, look at the mid laners. Corky on four and a half items is almost yeah. full build. Victor has just two and a half and has that one defensive item. Anime girl gonna be shredded down quite low here. All gonna come through. Not gonna find the CC though. Does get blocked by the spell shield, but Cackle's gonna come down. Shutdown gonna go through on Eog actually. Ricky quite low, gonna have to E up to try and find some defense. Look at you, big package by Zephron. Gonna split up the entire team. So much burn damage. Anime girl gonna go down here to the rest of the team. And Zephron again shining in this game. Finds four for St. Clair. 
They will route them and they will shove this as fast as possible. Gonna get the soul point and Zephyrot on this Corgi is just so good right now. Yeah, wow, well, they they really just saved them, right? They're, oh, he's gonna get oh, him he's too. Gonna get, the, get the final kill for the ace. I mean, Durham found the pick on Ehug. And, and Zephyroth just comes in with the package and is able to save the fight right at the end here. That's We're most likely going to see game. If not, they're just going to take an inhibitor and leave. And Maybe I, take this bottom inhib as well. I love this revenge story because we talked about before the game, Hectic smurfed on Zephyroth last time they played each other. He was the only one. He was solo killing him consistently in lane. In this game, he solo killed him, I think, four times. He's been the difference maker for St. Clair in this one. And right now... I don't see a way back for Durham. They're down almost 10k gold now. In a matter of five minutes, six yeah. minutes, it went from a 2k gold lead to a 10k gold lead. Yeah, that's... Oh, and we're going to see the oh, instant replay, replay here from this bear and flip. It's okay. That is that is what it is. We'll find out later what the fight was. But in the meanwhile, St. Clair did get the Mountain Soul. They also claimed bot in him and mid in him. So now... With Baron coming up in two and a half minutes, still a little bit of time here to decide what they want to do, but I do expect them to try and push out top here and, you know, look for a fight because you are on soul point. Here it is. So look at this. Zephyrot in the back line. Spots four of them all clustered together. It's going to W through the whole team. Look at that burn damage coming through. That is so it's much. There's nothing you can do. And, I, I mean, at this point, four items on Corky. He's going to get a fifth only come back into the live here. And, yeah, you see he's so strong at this point. Like... This is where St. Clair is really going to shine because we hit 30 minutes, but St. Clair with this goldie, they've accrued Moffat already down to zero HP. Zephyrot going to W4, going to go for the Oh, It's going to oh, find him. It's gonna find them. You wow. can run back to your team, but that auto will follow you anywhere you go. And that is a pick and a 197 Jarvan. I mean, right now, Zephyrot is literally walking into three people. He doesn't even care. Yeah, I mean, he's he's chunking the Mundo, which is a, a pretty big thing to do. It's just so, so far ahead on this pick, and it's so good here. St. Clair going to collapse, looking for this last inhibitor. Ricky going to get stunned Triple up here for a hit. second, but it's so hard to fight now. You just don't have enough items to push them back here. St. Clair with the Mountain Soul shielding up as well. All those resistances coming through. They're going to go for this last push here. The wave in bot lane is going to crash. They're going to take down these turrets. going to dump all their ults on the wave, but it doesn't matter if you ult it. Dump your ult on the wave because you have the rest of the champions inside. You're going to go in here. Actually, Nazanya's but so much damage coming down here from the Cork and Caro's going to find one, though. Going to find Ricky here in a second as well. Mundo going to walk forward. That's two down, actually. No one down here for St. Clair, but they have to be careful. This Corky's still here, still doing damage. You're going to find the victor in the back. Going to get the auto on one. Going to affect the auto on the other. And that's going to be a triple. Quadra for Zephyron. Stamps his name on this game. Stamps his name on this series. And that is going to be it. That is going to be St. Clair taking game number one in the semifinals. Looking to sweep this series and go to NECC Grand Finals. Wow, right at the end there, just as we saw, Zephyrod, the damage is just too high. He does all of this damage to them under tower. They get two picks. Durham's thinking they're back in the fight. They can save this game, but their back line is one-shottable uh, from, from Zephyrod. I love the fact that we talk so much about the... Gwen from Ehug, we talked so much about the Jax from Ricky, but in the end, it's Zephyrot sneaking in with that Corky in the last yeah. pick that is <laughs> the difference maker in this game. And I mean, there's not a better event story, right? Like in the regular season, they played Durham and both games, Hectic just smashed Zephyrot in lane, solo killing him, making huge impacts on the map. But in this game, the fact that Zephyrot was able to solo kill him multiple times in lane, went to other lane, fought so well in team fights was the difference maker is just got to feel so good for him and, and looking forward to game number two it's going to be a, yeah, it's going to be a sure. tight one but st Clair, i think definitely the advantage there yeah especially yeah it's funny like you said we're talking about jack so we're talking about the gwen and the corky really was what i thought was kind of their like fill in pick like we yeah. who are we going to fill it amid oh uh, let's put some extra ap in there right kind of thing and then it just ends up being the difference maker that package putting in so much yeah. damage in these team fights like, oh, wow. Yes, we are going to be heading into game two here sometimes. We're actually already in the draft. So they just want to start with us up immediately. So we are going to see. The, yeah, first. I was saying, we, we have the same bands, except this time we are going to see the Corky band instead of. Um, who was the last band in the first game? Why? I'm completely blanking. I know, I know it was Leona and Darius first. Yeah, I know. Me too. But I can't remember the last one is. So uh, it was an 80s. It was Caitlyn. 
That's who it was. Yeah. yeah. So That's we're going to get a Caitlyn right. not banned out instead of Corky. Kay Again, we're going to see Absolutely. the exact same draft actually coming through so far. Yeah. Yeah. Jinx for Durham too as well. I, I, I just realized that. Yeah. And I think for me, I this pr probably pretty good. I think I think the Jinx did her job. I think uh, the Ash Lulu also did pretty well. So I really like these picks coming through. I don't think you really have to change a lot. For the side of St. Clair, obviously you did just win with this same draft, but looking forward in the second game, I think you have to kind of look towards that mid lane and you do have Corky Bano, so you can, again, go for this. We are going to see the J4 again, so okay. it's just yeah, a mirror draft. Exact I think, draft. I guess the, what we take in this right is Durham liked their game plan, they just didn't like the execution. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, to be fair, I, the Jarvan pick I'm not sure about, right? Because we, uh, we've we seen how that goes into the Gwen. But the Jinx was doing completely fine, in my opinion, especially once they got into those late game team fights. She was up, always up on CS. Uh, she's always getting in all all of her auto rotations in that team fight, uh, playing very safe. And the Nautilus going to come in as well, very different lane than we saw last time. A lot well, heavier on the engage. I was, yeah, yeah, it is a heavier engage. It does have a little bit of disengage with the slow, but I think it's a pretty similar style to what they wanted to go with in the last one. Um, and I think really, I did really good thresh hooks. I really like what yeah. he did in the last game. Obviously, I think, again, it was just a game that kind of got out of their hands. I, I think it was, again, that jungle mid duo that was making such the a huge Gwen? difference. And we're going to see the Drake Gwen drafted again. So, I mean, if I was St. Clair, I'd really like this jungle matchup because it worked out so well for them in the last game. So why not just run it again? Yeah, especially like we said at the starting two, seeing that farm differential. I, I It seems like the Gwen clear is just crazy fast, yeah. at least in comparison to Jarvan. I think uh, Yug really likes his pathing, right? Because yeah. like every game we see him, he's always ahead in CS of the other jungle. Yeah. Always. Yeah, for sure. One thing I do want to talk about too, Nautilus, one of those champs that has been given a lot more options with this new with these new preseason buffs. Obviously, I wanna say Aftershock or or Guardian. I know some people like to take Guardian. Personally, I'd say Aftershock, but definitely more of the like safer pick in the lane. Yeah. But Glacial Augment is also a very strong pick. I mean, you hit one hook, and who, whatever target it was, is stuck there essentially. Yeah, Glacier Dogman is strong on a lot of people. I yeah. think a lot of supports are really turning to that rune. It, it is very, very strong. The slow it provides is very, very unique too because it it finds out other people around you, so you don't mm -hmm. have to actually hit them with your abilities. As long as you hit uh, another champion with the abilities, it'll hit them. So uh, it's a pretty good rune. I will be interested to see what he picks here. And looks like Saint Clair going towards the Azir. We know. Obviously, uh, very good on the Yon for St. Clair. Also very good on the Corky year. But we are going to see these year locked in. So, Zephyrot, again, on this kind of mid to late game carry. I definitely like what they're doing here. But Azir blind is very dangerous. Yeah, I don't... Then again, two bands coming out from Durham as well towards this mid lane. Victor and Orianna. I don't really know what uh hectic plays um but oh the Ooh. silas pick is gonna come out now granted that could be top or mid i um, think it's most likely mid. mid i want to yeah. see i think top lane silas had its time but uh unfortunately it's just such a vulnerable laning phase yeah. that you can't really play it top because ganks just mean you, you end up dying because the lane is too long you don't have enough survivability yeah. and your cooldowns are too low so um, a good pick here. I think I do like the Lulu Walt on it. Uh, I don't really know. Maybe the Ash Alt as well, but mm -hmm. I don't really see too much potential from the ultimates from it. And we're going to get the Akali in the top lane as well. So that's uh, a very different pick from yeah, that. That is, is a 180. And then ooh. the Aatrox is going to come out. I like from this. From Ricky. Yeah, I like this. I think I like this just because of the fact that. Uh, Akali hasn't really been that strong in meta. She's always been a decent option, but until you really hit that level nine mark, you don't have a lot of agency in lane mm -hmm. because your cooldown, your energy consumption is way too high on your Qs. You know, you you can't really clear away fast enough. And for for Aatrox, right, you're spamming your Q on cooldown. You're trying to force that wave as much as possible. So it's going to give Ricky a lot of agency in that top lane that he didn't really have. I mean, he had it against the Mundo, but he kept dying from it. So it gives him a lot of agency in lane that he isn't really going to get punished as hard for. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I want to think about how this uh, mid lane matchup is going to go. Um, honestly, I can see Silas getting pressure in early for sure. Um, but then again, when those those abilities are off cooldown, you are very susceptible to a quick like one two soldier goes in, yeah. dashes in, and then you're just taking a couple autos, and that's going to chunk you down. 
Um, so I definitely think this could go either way in the mid lane. Yeah, I think for me to talk about the last game, like looking at the Gwen matchup, the Gwen and Corky, I think were definitely uh, a lot more potent. I think the Zir can be, but he's more of that late game. And he does have a little bit of slow with his Q, but it's not significant. So again, I think both junglers probably going to stay away from mid lane as much as possible, trying to look towards top lane, because I think top lane is going to be the one where you're going to be able to find kills because both of these laners have their strengths, but uh, Akali definitely going to be weaker in the early game, yeah. not able to clear waves. And if you can get, if you can unlock Aatrox on the map, it would be massive. Yeah, definitely. I think getting Ricky into this like late game scaling position when he has the opportunity in a lane like this is definitely key for St. Clair with this comp. Yeah, so we're just going to take a quick break here uh, as players choose their characters and we'll be back as soon as this game begins or as long as we're loading into it, but we'll be back in a minute regardless. Stay tuned. St. Clair up 1-0 in the semifinals looking to close up and bring themselves to the grand finals of the NECC playoffs. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back gonna happen gonna pop the w oh, Mind, he's like, come back down. Up, yeah that was a huge heal though is he gonna live from that ah. there's no way this mundo lives from that he does again he live the it's gonna be fighting gun. mid oh the flash gonna go through oh zephra lives i don't know how he lived through that storm able to survive here engaging come through in the bot lane as well hook gonna find shield bow come through yet so i think barlow there if he does get engaged i would definitely be dead gonna w with this wall actually oof down to half hp a lot of damage from this corky forced to flash out barlow all oh, the damage is not going to get through from the Corky though. Kyora is going to be slowed down significantly here. Will Angelo Flash going to come through Barlow? Going to find Kyora is there and will tie us up at four kills a piece. Zephyroth just start taking the like stacking on the damage into Oof. As we're going to see two engages in the mid lane here. Ehug going to come in. He's trying to get that damage down on Hectic. He is going to take him down. Moffat, he just can't peel and he can't take down Ehug. Yeah, e and it will force him off. Will be used to force use a package here. They're going on Moffat though. Moffat oh, damage down half in on Moffat. He will go down here. Zephyroth, a lot of damage there. Oof going to be chipped down quite a lot as well. Get the play onto the turret. Turret shot will come down. Ehug going to barely survive. No, the shutdown will come through. The ignite was on him there and did end up getting taken down. Just a cute cleaver. We'll be able to survive. Going to pop the E as well, but the ultimate coming through from Anime Girl 2007. That's so much healing, and he will take down Ricky again going down. But meanwhile, in the mid lane, Flash going to come through. Zephyroth going to get hectic again. Zephyroth, so huge, so huge for St. Clair. Bot turret will go down here in just a moment. Looks like... Again, Gage gonna come through here. Barlow gonna get hooked up, and yeah, he's gonna go down here. Despite the shield bow, doesn't really help you. Ricky gonna be taken down low here from Mundo as well. Mundo gonna put the flash through. He will get queued up. He's gonna get slowed here. Ricky gonna be taken down yet again. He's gonna be taken down here. Hook gonna come through. Shield gonna come through as well. Flash gonna be popped down here, but he will be taken down by the. That's a huge shutdown for Victor. EX still in this fight somehow. Kyra's gonna be found on the backside. Fresh gonna flash over the wall. Gonna go for the up, but not gonna find anything. Fresh gonna get hooked up. That's gonna be a kill again over to Durham. And Durham find three in that one. A good comeback and a massive Fine thresh, but that will be Eug finding the dragon as well. Oof gonna be taken down almost instantly, and that's two people down. A double kill for Barlow starting off this fight. Anime are gonna be chained up here. Will pop the ult though. So much healing coming through. Eug gonna go down here. Shutdown coming through for Kyra's. Kyra's gonna find a second as well. Hectic gonna find thresh there. Ricky barely alive, but so much healing, so much frontline from the side of Hectic gonna find thresh there. Ricky barely alive, but so much healing, so much frontline from the side of Durham. The fact that you got two picks and they're still winning this fight is crazy. That's gonna be a ball coming in. Gonna fight two on the backside. That's a huge shutdown as St. Clair take that fight and go for a team fight too. Zephyroth fighting two already in the backside. They will lose that fight, but in the end, everywhere else, they're winning this one. They found the Baron. They found Hectic. They found Anime Girl. There's one person left on the backside. Somehow this Jinx will escape, but it doesn't matter. Gonna find the CC though. Does get blocked by the Spell Shield, but Kaku's gonna come down. Shutdown gonna go through on Eog actually. Ricky quite low. Gonna have to E up. Try and find some defense. Look at you. Big package by Zephyroth. Gonna split up the entire team. So much burn damage. Anime Girl gonna go down here to the rest of the team. And Zephyroth again shining in this game. Finds four for St. Clair. But they have to be careful. This Corky's still here, still doing damage. You're going to find the victor in the back. Going to get the auto on one, get the auto on the other. And that's going to be a triple. Quadra for Zephyron. Stamps his name on this game. Stamps his name on this series. And that is going to be it. That is going to be St. Clair taking game number one in the semifinals. Looking to sweep this series and go to any...